Good morning as we end a week, reach the end of British summertime and end Mark's Gospel, our daily source of scripture since July. Thank you for joining us on a Friday morning for our reading, reflection and requests to God. Mark chapter 16. He said to them, Go into all the world and preach the gospel to all creation. Whoever believes and is baptised will be saved, but whoever does not believe will be condemned. And these signs will accompany those who believe. In my name they will drive out demons, they will speak in new tongues, they will pick up snakes with their hands, and when they drink deadly poison it will not hurt them at all. They will place their hands on people who are ill, and they will get well. After the Lord Jesus had spoken to them, he was taken up into heaven, and he sat at the right hand of God. Then the disciples went out and preached everywhere, and the Lord worked with them and confirmed his word by the signs that accompanied it. Yesterday and today, we heard the epilogue attached to Mark's Gospel. As a later writer added quick summaries of what Matthew, Luke and John wrote about, which indicates to us that while Mark was written first, its last chapter was probably added just about last of the four Gospels. Three ancient sources, copies, do not include these verses, but all the others do. So you take your pick. I'm happy to receive these verses as scripture, as the church has traditionally done, but I won't fall out with those who, very understandably, do not think of them that way. Both alternatives make sense, and one does not add greatly to the other. More importantly, Mark 16 tells us how Jesus was not left to die in the tomb, but was raised from the dead and showed himself to many people that he had conquered death. He was dead, he is risen. And so the story of the Easter community, the church, began. He has risen, he is not here. In a society where the high number of fatalities from the coronavirus has made death the central news on our media diet, despite efforts by politicians to make it themselves or the economy or some such thing, we do well to recall this risenness of Jesus. His inextinguishable life, put to death for three days, but rising again, his life is worth holding to the forefront of our minds. Whether we are dealing with the virus, the flu, cancer, chronic illness or failures of our bodies to perform at full strength, whether due to poor hearts or lungs or whatever. Mark 16 tells us of the release of spiritual powers to the believers. They will place their hands on people who are ill and they will get well. That's how Mark summarises it. Life has broken in. We are doomed no more, but our heirs in Christ of eternal life both here and when we die and that's worth celebrating as we end our readings from Mark. And so we worship God together. Jesus Christ is risen from the dead. Alleluia. He has defeated the powers of death. Alleluia. Jesus turns our sorrow into dancing. Alleluia. He has the words of eternal life. Alleluia. And now we confess our sins. We have lived by our own strength and not by the power of your resurrection. In your mercy, forgive us. Lord, hear us and help us. We have lived by the light of our own eyes as faithless and not believing. In your mercy, forgive us. Lord, hear us and help us. We have lived for this world alone and doubted our home in heaven. In your mercy forgive us. Lord, hear us 
and help us. And we join together in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. We pray for the people of the world who have lost sight of your victory over death. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the members of the church who have simply stopped believing in your power for all of us with our doubts. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the distressed and the anxious that they might turn to you for help. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For the patients and their families who have begun to lose hope with this dreadful disease. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For strength in us to face up to our fears and to speak about them with others. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For a willingness to appear vulnerable in a world which demands a shallow appearance of perfection in its heroes. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And for mercy, when we have become so self-sufficient that we are unwilling to seek help from others. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, in whom we live and move and have our being, we humbly pray that your Holy Spirit may so guide and govern us that in all the cares and occupations of our daily life, we may never forget your presence, but may remember that we are always walking in your sight through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Do join me for a short meditation tomorrow uh, and then again on Sunday at 10 o'clock and 12 o'clock while regulations here permit. I hope you'll enjoy tomorrow morning's pre-recorded little prayers. Good morning. <laughs>